a very good afternoon to all of you i'm sakshi and it's my pleasure to welcome you all on behalf of e mobility plus and first view group thank you all for joining us today for our webinar on transforming ev product design and development through comprehensive engineer simulation well in the new normal era the way of doing research and development projects has underlined the relevance of digital twin simulation and virtual testing in much stronger ways with demand for new features and reducing time to market physical prototyping and virtual design testing has become the mainstream organizations now have long used simulation based approaches to develop better products faster and at a lower cost across the organization this 90 minute webinar in collaboration with design tech and altair will explain how oems and major suppliers can make a significant amount of progress in the electrification journey using powerful and comprehensive simulation engineering software let me brief you quickly about today's program we will be beginning the webinar with a very interesting presentation which will be followed by a panel discussion and concluded by a question and answer round before initiating the proceedings for the day we would like to thank our partner design tech systems private limited and altair for their immense support in planning and executing this webinar now without any further ado it's time to start the webinar with a presentation by uh, mr murlidhar guma from altair welcome to screen sir thank you sakshi uh, let me share my screen i hope uh, the presentation is visible to all of you yes please go ahead sure thank you so good afternoon everyone uh, so my name is murli dar guma uh, so i am taking care of ev solutions from a consulting group from altair so today uh, as sakshi has mentioned we are going to have a discussion on uh, how altair is helping uh, e mobility industry uh, through the simulation and uh, data analytics platform so a little bit about of alter alter is a leading convergence of and uh, uh, leading convergence of computational science and ai with engineering uh, we help with our software and solutions to our customers to bring safer and more sustainable products uh, uh, to the market uh, by optimizing material and cost and weight uh, essentially to reduce the carbon footprint so we uh, alter have a vision to leverage computational science to drive intelligent decisions for a more connected safe and sustainable future so that's our uh, vision so we uh, we work on this technologies and our solution part uh, portfolio uh, essentially was on physics based simulation so alter has started you know 35 years back on on the simulation technology on the physics and we eventually grown into various uh you know domains high performance computing data analytics and so on so under physics based simulations we have our structural simulation tools cfd thermal uh and coming to the electromagnetics uh, where the today's topic on the e mobility we have our uh, tools for battery designing uh and then the controller designing um uh, and the model based system engineering tools and uh, uh, uh you know uh, discrete element modeling tools where uh, highly complex physics problems are solved today we have our own manufacturing simulation tools uh, like inspire cast and uh, you know 3d printing um, you know inspire 3d printing and all uh, this will be complemented through our high performance computing uh, uh, solutions uh, it might be on prem and our cloud solutions uh, and we have our robust data analytics platform uh, where uh, we help uh, the bfsi engineering customers and automobile customers uh, recently we acquired rapid miner is a uh, uh, strengthened our data analytics platform and with all this our simulation uh, and the alter solution helping our uh, customers to uh, more customize based on the requirements and use so alter units will give uh, uh, more freedom uh, and flexibility to use um, you know the simulation technologies we are offering to our customers in a much more effective way so with that uh, i'll try to quickly jump on today's uh, topic on inter interesting thing on the how the technology convergence is happening in the e mobility industry especially uh, the product has changed is uh, you know 
a definition uh, the product has looked at are now commuting uh, uh, a product but then it converted into a smart product where a lot of electrical systems and electronic system come in and uh, you know much more smarter and understanding uh, you know of the driving uh, patterns of the user maybe a climatic control or ads abs all these have been evolved uh, through a smart product and then we are talking about a smart and connected world that today we are trying to understand or visualize how the performance of the systems uh, you know uh, and across uh, uh, you know different locations and uh, uh, do a more uh, predictive and uh, 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 design uh, decisions can be made effectively so as you see uh, overall the product ecosystem has uh, you know connected through uh, uh, systems uh, through iot through electrification it was you know much more um, you know uh, challenging and then the autonomous driving us uh, and the fleet management all these are the uh, product ecosystem is developing uh, along with the product so uh, as a system is getting complex and the technology is getting evolved so the uh, the, the the product uh, uh, you know uh, validations and the design validations are going to be much more critical with that i'll go to my next slide how uh, how the simulation is also trying to transform with respect to the product, uh, you know, uh, technology transformation, which we have seen in the previous slide. Uh, in in uh, predominantly, the product design has been from, uh, you know, years on 2D and then transformed to 3D. And uh, the current era, we are seeing the simulation driven design uh, uh, as taking an upfront, uh, you know, uh, role uh, where our customers are trying to understand or the probably industry is trying to uh, do a, a much more uh, mature designs in the initial phase, which I'm going to talk on as he one, two, three in my coming slides. Uh, in same way, the product validation also trying to converge with the simple models to a complex models. And today's world, we can do a multi-physics and co-simulation. And thanks to high-performance computing mission today, we don't have any challenges on the computational power. So, so we can see the product uh, physical testing simulations are getting reduced uh, and more on more uh, simulation technology is getting increased. And today, as we have seen the connected data and connected uh, you know, vehicles, more on data driven design is going to come in. And that's how the simulation and data driven design decisions are going to happen. And this is the evolution, which we are also trying to see parallelly um, in, in, in a simulation, right? With that, uh, let me just uh, put up uh, what are the typical product challenges being uh, original equipment manufacturers, which is an auto EMS or a, a, a tier one manufacturers like a battery manufacturer or a motor, ma uh, motor manufacturers. Typically, the pressing issues are a process cost, quality and time to the market. So with this, the product challenges uh, are going to be overall cost design and development cost your prototyping and testing cost should be optimal your manufacturing cost to be taken care so these are the challenges uh, of a product uh, you know uh, 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 a product guy or who is who is uh, manufacturing this um, you know products uh, the objectives are going to be understanding the vehicle specifications and bill of materials in concern with the uh, prototype and testing uh, you know ensuring the billing uh, you know bill of materials and tooling and supply chain has to be taken as uh, one of the key objectives how do we do this uh, challenges and objectives in a you know in a much more um, you know um, uh, pragmatic way is to see the product process goals to set up with like pre range power connected and a durability safety which we'll talk about the performance and addressing uh, abuse scenarios of the realistic scenarios of this products uh, are going to help us on defining the process goals uh, to meet the project objectives similar way the product process as actually also need to be uh, into an account where uh, you understand the design feasibility study. You understand uh, the um, you know failure mode effect analysis and uh, do a virtual product validations. I have a, a number of design verification plans to ensure the product uh, has uh, verified and designed it in a you know right way and uh, essentially to address and optimize and uh, you know manufacturing uh, process and uh, get up an efficient process. So to put that in a in a in a uh, interesting kind of model, which you've seen in the image right now, uh, the product quality uh, will be minimum when your operational cost goes high, infrastructure cost goes high, and uh, based on the resources, timelines, and the best practice, if you don't have, these are the key reasons why the product quality can go you know uh, bad. If you want to increase the product quality, definitely the cost and the efforts are going to be high, where you have to invest on um, you know prototypes, manufacturing cost has to be taken care product competitiveness is to be taken care and a number of variants that are producing in the product has to be taken care to handle it efficiently. So that's where the simulation or the infrared product development process comes in to ensure the product timelines are being met, make sure more uh, flexible and scalable uh, modular, you know, design verification plans are made uh, and less number of prototypes and make sure the right weight, uh, 
right weight to be made i not use a light weight right weighting is a more important thing to be made uh, with the best performance and optimized performance so this this helps uh, the 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 product development uh, um, uh, process to be sh you know shorter the timelines and efficient to launch the products uh, uh, in 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 a, in a um, uh, less cost so with that uh, how a product process development uh, pro uh, phase looks like in a typical virtual product de design uh, is what has been shown at, at each phase the product development uh, uh, you know phase the virtual simulation play a different role like in a starts from vehicle specifications where you roll out the empirical calculations about your vehicle weight or probably uh, understand your performance characteristics of the vehicle can be done through a 0d or 1d simulations and then do a feasibility study uh, of your packaging space or could be understanding your loads and uh, the possible locations and the load paths and all on the feasibility study um, uh, you know and decide on do and do uh, no uh, do and don'ts of this uh, particular uh, vehicle uh, platform and then try to mature with the initial concept design simulations uh, by initial validations especially if you are talking about a battery or a motor to understand the battery sizing and the motor design understand the structural uh, you know architectural challenges of this and uh, the weight challenges of this and all uh, in a detailed design you do a mul uh, more complex uh, based uh, simulations or a multiphysics simulations where you try to understand uh, the abuse scenarios we'll talk about few design verification plans in coming slides so more about uh, to see the abuse scenarios and the real case scenarios in the detailed design simulation phase and integrated simulation phase uh, you try to understand the vehicle performance and the system performance at, at in a connected level like where, where model based system engineering simulation tools are being used and connected uh, with the 3d simulation tools so that's how the typical EV product development phase, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, goes on in a virtual product development. Uh, that goes to what alter roles play in this product development phase and how our simulation uh, tools or the technologies help our customers is on the structural and CFD simulations primarily address architectural thermal issues, CFD issues, be it in ride and handling or uh, dynamic issues. Uh, um, uh, in terms of NVH could be um, uh, now safety and reliability issues in terms of crash and uh, um, uh, thermal analysis and thermomechanical analysis are, are, are the one which we use uh, our tools like OptiStrike radios and um, you know um, uh, CFD tools like UltraFluidX and NanoFluidX and so on and so forth. Uh, our concept simulation tools uh, like SimSolid and Inspire will help uh, the pre-designed simulations in the similar you know, structural validations. When it comes to the e-mobility motor uh, and uh, the battery or the major powertrain systems where we have our own uh, simulation tools uh, to validate uh, like you know motor designing or probably uh, 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 understanding the duty cycle of these motors and uh, you know uh, efficiently handle the thermal and vibroacoustic behavior of these motors same with the battery we will understand the battery validations by you know both on safety reliability and the uh, on the thermal perspective uh, controller design validations are much more important for both in terms of vms and as well as a motor controller we have our own simulation or 1d and 0d and model based system engineering tools where we uh, uh, try to uh, integrate this system simulation tools with our uh, uh, motor or a battery you know 3d simulations and do a hardware in loop and uh, so on and so forth to validate the performance of the system uh, so our data management tool as i mentioned uh, as a comprehensive package where we understand the um, you know predictive uh, analytics or the you know, system connectivity or a device management through our you know data analytics platform so this is um, going to meaning i'm going to talk on this few of the things in coming slides but this is where alter role play role have, you know wider role in the e mobility so to take an example of architectural what actually the design verification plan which we we, we, we saw the process uh, of uh, what uh, you know virtual product plan and we saw the role of alter in the ev product development uh, you know role uh, we'll try to understand a bit more detail on how architectural design verification plans in EV actually, you know, very important to name. Uh, I've just put two-wheeler uh, design verification plans in, in the slide uh, with some animations, but importantly, uh, from concept simulations, we understand the strength and, uh, you know, stiffness and the durability of the systems at a component level and uh, a system level at a vehicle level. And you do a more design simulations uh, by understanding the realistic scenarios, like it could be a two poster, it could be a right um, uh, with a going uh, vehicle going with a rough road conditions and all. Try to couple the simulations with uh, 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 with the multiphysics simulation and understand the effect uh, of the overall vehicle um, during the test condition or during the you know vehicle running on the road condition so pre precisely you are doing the reliability based simulations uh, which will help you to take the uh, you know design decisions uh, in a much more effective way so 
one has to do uh, from cascade from your component to system to vehicle level targets and uh, do the simulations at each level to uh, to take the uh, you know proper uh, uh, design decisions so the, the this uh, with this i'll just try to uh, take to the next slide where uh, how the product design has got changed like i mentioned in my previous slide the simulation driven design takes a you know uh, a, a, a role where the product design has got changed so the c123 is one of the approach where uh, we define uh, uh, un, uh, unlike your traditional way of designing in 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 a, in a cat software the the simulation um, you know tool is helping you to take the concept design and uh, mature it and do a multidisciplinary optimization like we have seen in c0 we try to identify the packaging space of a vehicle put up a loads uh, and the targets that we are going to get which will get the load path identification in a conceptual ways and try to do a, a shape uh, optimizations with the gauge or probably the um, um, uh, you know thickness and all and then we try to mature it with much more um, uh, you know details uh, with the you know placing of material choosing of a materials probably uh, understanding the bill of materials and uh, kind of a manufacturing techniques and all that so with that uh, we move it to the multidisciplinary optimization where we will pick the design verification uh, design variables of this particular uh, panels with different design verification plans be it a crash or safety or nvh and uh, uh, and do a design of experiments of these particular systems to get an optimal output so in end we are trying to squeeze the product development timelines from concept uh, to the matured design in a very pragmatic way where the simulation takes an um, uh, you know upper hand and this this is the uh, this is the way um, uh, we are uh, you know uh, uh, progressing in the simulation driven design and many uh, european uh, manufacturing uh, uh, you know customers or automotive manufacturing customers are using this approach and trying to develop their you know ground up vehicles on this similar uh, to that with that i'll just try to move on to the you know battery simulation development process similar like like vehicle development process you've seen battery also has its own simulation development process starting from select cell selection to the integrated validations where we do a sizing of the battery pack a validation of the battery pack with thermal and probably a designing of the battery pack um, uh, could be bms design or probably equivalent circuit model of your battery pack and try to do more uh, physics based simulations uh, like uh, you know uh, in a 3d simulations if you do about uh, vibration shock or module crush test thermal runaway more on thermal uh, simulations and uh, um, uh, maybe model based system simulations where you integrate bms with battery to understand the soc and uh, you know probably dod and all that uh, which essentially give you the battery performance characteristics uh, uh, through a battery development process so uh, with that uh, in, in in short if you have to put a dashboard uh, we we will try to design the cell uh, module and battery pack through our concept simulation tools uh, and then we understand the packaging space and ensure the packaging space is enough to make sure the uh, there is no thermal runaway kind of a conditions uh, especially when thermal runaway will happen and mainly on three phase like mechanical thermal runaway electrical thermal runaway and the, you know thermal thermal runaway so uh, the mechanical thermal runaway is primarily because of the any impact loads that coming onto the structure so if your structure is not properly integrated then you have an issue with the mechanical thermal runaway it cause so your packaging uh, of this particular system and integration of this module pack should be you know good enough to take care of that electrical is a uh, basically the short circuit or the over voltage or the current to, could be causing this you should be ensuring that you have all the proper uh, smart bms and then uh, proper loading um, you know design you have been done with uh, with the uh, different uh, drive cycle inputs to your battery pack uh, so that the, the 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 thing can be managed thermal runaway is uh, probably on the thermal based only on the uh, internal thermal uh, you know uh, dissipation of the cells or from the external environmental conditions you have to make sure the thermal runaway is being damaged so with all the altered suit of simulations you can uh, uh, do all both mechanical electrical and thermal uh, you know uh, conditions of the battery pack can be designed uh, and you can mature uh, the design uh, in case uh, many of our you know battery battery are not manufacturing uh, you know many many uh, many two wheeler or three wheeler or four wheeler customers are not manufacturing their battery own so they buy the cells and they generally try to you know design their own pack and few guys are even trying to 
uh, even uh, by the pack itself so nevertheless but still you can do a battery simulations but uh, uh, but on the more on the physical testing and then from a physical uh, models you try to develop your empirical calculations uh, uh, through a rom ai rom ai is a uh, new tool, tool uh, which alter provides and through rom ai you can do a uh, machine learning models and predict the battery performance by changing those variables so so these are some of the new technology and the uh, you know uh, tools available wherein you develop the design verification plan starts from concept detail and uh, at any even integrated level uh, to ensure the battery safety is there in a similar lines we have a motor and controller design validations where you design the motor at a concept to the detailed design simulations and through controller we can integrate the uh, model uh, we use pcm as our tool to integrate the um, you know system simulations to motor to the controller uh, and then uh, with an integrated simulation, we'll see the overall system performance. Uh, so I'll cover uh, the workflow. How do we do a hardware in loop in the, in the coming slides? Similar to the battery design verification plans, you should have a motor design verification plans to understand the electrical and mechanical and the thermal uh, aspects at a system level and a vehicle level operating conditions, uh, where it will uh, help you to take a design decisions efficiently. You being a um, motor manufacturer or even an automobile manufacturer where you have your own uh, motor designing. So you have to uh, do all these design simulation verification plans to effectively handle the motor performance. Uh, how uh, alter simulation in a nutshell, the motor uh, simulation or a controller simulation comes as I mentioned. The multi physics simulation can be done through our CFD simulation using uh, you know SimLab and EcoSol and uh, through a vibroacoustic simulation through a structural solo car OptiStruct. Basic uh, uh, motor designing is done through a flux motor, which can be integrated uh, uh, through a PC, which we develop and design for our controller design, either through core simulation or as an FMU. You can uh, you can uh, generate a code through embed and through a hardware in loop. So we can do a hardware in loop, software in loop, process in loop based on the maturity of your design. But essentially, you can run the realistic uh, scenarios of drive cycle data and then uh, analyze and uh, uh, validate your uh, you know product. This is the uh, this is the dashboard of our electromagnetic applications. Uh, what we have, uh, so prim precisely, we do address EMI and EMC, where it is very important and critical for uh, electric mobile uh, electric vehicles, where the voltage and currents are high and many number of electrical and electrical systems are coming in place so the radiations and high frequencies needs to be taken into an account and also we do a, a, a communication through our pin prop with as a, as a as a simulation tool where we do a v2v v2c v2g kind of a communication protocols we develop so that uh, is about the electromagnetic. So this is, uh, uh, again, an interesting topic of us on the digital twin, how the digital twin is actually changing uh, the the way uh, uh, you know the industry is working predominantly. And this is a new buzzword in the industry. So typically, uh, we, I'll try to you know talk about in a in a in a couple of slides what actually a digital twin means. There are many definitions of the digital twins, but um, uh, this this slide um, you know trying to infer what actually the digital twin what how to alter it means is a you know in a typical V system designing you see a concept simulation where the digital uh, you know in in a virtual model you cascade the requirements and then mature your design to the detail and then um, you know release a product and from that to the end of life in similar way uh, we are connecting the physical and digital world through this v system designing with the low fidelity models to a high fidelity models and uh, we are connecting this through uh, models through an iot sensors uh, and the uh, you know analytic platform uh, to take a more engineering and the data driven decisions uh, which i mentioned which help uh, to understand uh, the um, uh, you know uh, probably a productive maintenance could be or performance uh, study could be or it could be an uh, um, uh, uh, the uh, 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 a uh, operational management or asset management of this product right so this is the dashboard of how uh, different type of digital twins which i mentioned in my previous slide to a low fidelity to an extremely high complex fidelity model we call as a low fidelity model where a model based system engineering uh, to uh, you know uh, model has been built virtually of which which is similar to a physical to a physical system or a physical twin integrated to understand the operational at product performance and with a 3d uh, the high fidelity or a multi physics simulation will do it to understand the overall product performance and uh, uh, to make the 
you know uh, operational or probably a product uh, uh, redesigning decisions can be made through that and uh, typically the hybrid digital team help you to do a predictive maintenance or the understanding of the uh, you know warranty or the life management of your thing can be done so that that's the uh, you know how all tier digital team works in in a nutshell in a very uh, simple uh, norm i i i try to you know describe it so as a whole uh, how uh, altair is helping the customers through uh, simulations through multi physics and the uh, building a right and uh, fidelity models through simulation tools uh, structural cft thermal power electronics uh, and we complement through our high performance computing systems uh, as clouds as a service and helping to solve this highly complex problems through our artificial intelligence and data management we are trying to build a knowledge driven design which helps uh, uh, you know our customers to take the design decisions in a much more efficient and effective way so that's a presentation from me thanks uh, to everyone for listening me i hope you have a good takeaways thank you very much for that insightful presentation uh now i would like to invite uh, mr shantaram jarav uh, for his presentation welcome to screen sir yeah yeah okay so i will just share my screen with you all of you okay the screen is visible to all of you right just let me know please yes sir hello yes please go ahead it's okay visible. so yeah okay so uh, my uh, one of my friend actually uh, explain explain you about uh, all the like software and software capabilities and its module and everything so i will just go through the one of our case studies we are perform with um, a perform on on board chargers so i will take this case study as a sort of uh, you can say uh, i will go in details and explain you how uh, we have done the analysis and what are the stages we have considered uh, in that analysis so uh, we have done this case studies uh, with uh, with iit bombay as a uh, uh, like uh, as a joint and um, and you can say like a uh, uh, mentorship uh, you can say program and uh, under professor Sh uh, professor shankar krishna so uh, yeah and uh, uh, okay so uh, so i will just start with uh, so what are the like the need and motivation of the current work uh, that, i mean what are the reason actually we have consider this casually uh, 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 as a uh, i'm mean, uh, uh, for consideration of the this current uh, i can say session so uh, as uh, we are talking about e mobility and all uh, uh, like uh, digital twin and uh, other like uh, the latest uh, current uh, i can say uh, the trends so uh, this is one of the product uh, which are uh, we are working for uh, this kind of like uh, uh, you can say requirement so uh, obc uh, is a on board charger we are using it in uh, this uh, uh, electric vehicles and it is used for uh, charging a vehicle uh, charging a battery and uh, so uh, we are charging this vehicle at steady state conditions like i mean the vehicle should be stopped and obviously uh, uh, i mean that's the uh, uh, reason so uh, there are lot of limitations in terms of like uh, its weight and uh, energy efficiency should be there it should be uh, quick in charge so all these are the like constraint uh, for this uh, you can say product so uh, also the in terms of ev there are lot of like thermal requirement and all these thing uh, thermal heat vibrations lot of thing i mean even the cost also uh, cause uh, you can say constraint and uh, all these reason uh, we have considered this as a product for uh, you can say um, analysis so uh, i will just go to the objective so what we have done here in this uh, case study it's like we have formulated the thermal guidelines for obc and then we have performed the multi objective optimization and we have uh, like finally uh, validated our uh, these uh, virtual simulation results with physical testing and we have made the sop so these are the like uh, objective we have achieved through this uh, i can say sorry 
now uh, i will go through only uh, uh, certain aspect of thermal because of time constraint and uh, uh, as uh, uh, it's allowed I and mean, it's only the 10 minutes it's allowed so uh, i will just go through the thermal analysis now uh, if you see the uh, this design uh, so this is a uh, uh, onboard charger and uh, if you see the heat sink is there the pcbs and pcb component and uh, the fan is there fan cover so all of these are the sort of like you can, you can say the representation of uh, the uh, product and uh, if you see the efficiency is uh, very high around 92 percent i mean it, uh, the part should be have uh, uh, such a we have to design in such a way that uh, we have to achieve the efficiency more than 90 percent so that's also one target we have to achieve and uh, obviously the weight and all these constraints are there so um, uh, actually I, uh, I, have, I mean I have hide the, the numbers because of uh, some confidential uh, I can say values but I would like to explain all of you that how we have uh, what is the approach we have uh, considered in thermal analysis so uh, multiple uh, like on PCB if we see multiple these uh, uh, magnetic components are there then the transistors and uh, transformer and all these uh, uh, MOSFETs so all these are the like uh, power dissipating components so uh, we have to be very careful in terms of uh, thermal analysis and uh, thermal performance so uh, we will go through like thermal assessment of uh, uh, this uh, sink assessment of 2.2 uh, uh, kilowatt obc so 2.2 uh, kilowatt is a obc we have considered for the uh, thermal analysis now, if you see, I mean, uh, we have done some uh, Pareto analysis in which uh, we have highlighted a sort of like the power losses, like uh, how the, um, I mean, who are, uh, who are the like maximum, uh, you can say, power dissipating component along with uh, on the PCB. So, uh, if you see here, uh, the MOSFET, transistor, uh, transformer, uh, the magnetic, most of the magnetic component actually contribute more to, in terms of like power losses. So we have highlighted that component and we have to target that component as a critical component in our uh, OBC. So if you see here, um, uh, so uh, the heat sink is uh, uh, actually, it is uh, like uh, it's sort of an enclosure to this PCB and in between that we have considered the thermal pad and uh, uh, this epoxy coating as a sort of like connection in between them. Now uh, I will sh just show you. I mean, how the heat uh, like uh, dissipating from its thermal source to the heat sink. Uh, so if you see here, um, so this is the sort of like um, uh, the bottom side is the heat sink, and then uh, uh, after that there is a thermal pad and uh, coating material, and after that uh, obviously the PCB and PCB component. So uh, the heat flows from source to junction, so uh, jun uh, junction to uh, like case, case to uh, uh, this epoxy potting, epoxy potting to uh, uh, heat sink and uh, heat sink to ambient. So that's the uh, flow, flow of heat from, uh, you can say in this system. Now, uh, these are the like stages we have considered in heat sink uh, this, uh, design as well as uh, this thermal system design. So uh, we have uh, done uh, the first the analytical modeling and component design as a first stage. In stake, second stage, we have done the uh, core simulation uh, for optimization. And third thing is we have done the like a sort of like uh, DOE uh, for a physical validation. Now here, uh, again, as I mentioned that we have to cut short because of the time limitations, but definitely we'll go, uh, uh, we, have, uh, we will go through the sort of like basic information about all these stages. So uh, this is analytical modeling and component design. So these are the like uh, three parameter, uh, three uh, sections we consider in that one. So the component level selection and design. So example, we take as an example, like a fan. Okay, so fan is also the part of that uh, process, uh, this uh, product design. And uh, uh, so uh, what should be the fan RPM? What should be the uh, location? Uh, and Again, uh, all these like uh, fin, uh, fin design, fin spacing, fin efficiency, all these parameters are there. So uh, 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 we have done a lot of DOE uh, and iterations based on uh, you can say the uh, uh, this, uh, you can say the work, uh, the uh, this simulation work. So uh, we come up with uh, sort of like uh, some guidelines uh, to fix this one. So. Uh, 
the second point is about the ecad uh, so we have to uh, model a sort of like um, uh, this electronic uh, cad model of this component and on pcbs so uh, in order to get a thermal analysis and uh, uh, for also the for assembling these uh, pcb in physicals and uh, third uh, so for that we are using like mental graphics and um, uh, this rtm2 for this one Third is a like thermal model, uh, like a, a CFD models and thermal network formulations. So uh, this thermal resistance uh, model we have uh, uh, estimated through the uh, this uh, ECAD and uh, as I mentioned from uh, uh, thermal, uh, you can say sync, uh, sync to the uh, power dissipating component. So uh, this is how we have estimated these uh, uh, these three parameters and. Uh, I will go through one by one again uh, after that one. So uh, this is a one sort of example of thermal resistance model. Um, uh, so this is a system level, uh, you can say model, in which uh, uh, there are multiple uh, power dissipating components are, in which, uh, are there. And uh, uh, the way of like orientation of the product, uh, these uh, components on PCB, uh, we are uh, putting that in like a series and parallel, uh, you can say way of like uh, 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 like a modeling and then uh, finally it goes to the uh, T and B end. So this is how uh, we have uh, combined this thermal resistance of that model uh, and we have estimated the uh, required thermal resistance in a model uh, for heat sink. So uh, we have considered this uh, K-Epsilon uh, turbulence model for uh, this fluid uh, thermal analysis. And uh, as I mentioned here, it's, uh, I mean, the basic background of that, it's an Stoke equations. And uh, at the end, we have uh, estimated the volumetric heat efficiency. So uh, we have performed these uh, different type of like simulations, as I mentioned that, uh, so electronic uh, this uh, performance we have uh, estimated through uh, uh, these uh, P spice softwares and again the software softwares are also there and then uh, we have ANSI softwares also to uh, uh, are there to check the performance of these systems. Then we have also used these uh, magnetic simulations through like Maxwell and Flux model. So uh, Maxwell is for ANSI's model and Flux is from RTL. So uh, we are using these tools for uh, these uh, kind of simulations. We have also performed these um, thermal and structural simulation through ice pack and Acusol. So we are using this uh, uh, component, uh, we are using these tools for these uh, kind of simulations. And for system level simulations, we have these ANSYS and RTI Hacker work. So uh, these are the like, uh, 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 like uh, sort of simulations we perform through uh, RTL and uh, RTL and uh, hyperwork tools. So uh, this is a short uh, sort of like uh, one thermal plot and again uh, the thermal uh, 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 CFD plot with respect to fan and its location. So uh, that's what actually we have shown in this one. Again, uh, we have performed this physical testing, as I mentioned. Uh, so we have to check the thermal uh, performance, uh, this virtual simulation performance with respect to physical test. So uh, uh, we have a thermal chamber uh, facilities at our, uh, uh, you can say lab, and uh, we have estimated the uh, different, uh, we have performed the different uh, DOE uh, with respect to this uh, test lab. And again, uh, we have uh, compared the results of like virtual simulation and physical test results. Uh, so uh, we are getting very uh, good correlation uh, uh, based on the different sort of like SOPs and guidelines. Now, this is a one example of like transformer. Uh, this is a uh, port code transformer. And uh, uh, this is one example uh, uh, I have shown here. Uh, uh, so where uh, we got a very good correlation. And uh, again, uh, as I mentioned, uh, I mean, uh, nowadays a lot of people are talking about these uh, digital twin and integrated multiphysics simulations. So as uh, for uh, specific to EV uh, uh, vehicle, uh, this is very much important. Uh, so, um, uh, sorry, uh, so we'll go through that one uh, also. So electrothermal, uh, these co-design strategies uh, coming into this picture. So. Uh, uh, we have to consider the lot of like um, input and again we have to consider a lot of like constants are there 
so uh, uh, we have to uh, i mean we have to uh, see uh, both things at a time like we have to i mean we have to combine uh, these uh, thermal performance as well as the emi emc performance so uh, based on that we have uh, designed one strategy in such a way that we achieve these both thing like what uh, so uh, it, it is it is a sort of like optimal uh, thermal uh, electrothermal perform uh, you can say uh, strategy and we achieve through this uh, 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 this is like stages of that uh, design so uh, here again the second uh, i mean that loop is uh, like power optimization loop and third, uh, second is like a sink optimization so power and uh, uh, this power is coming from like uh, this component and the objective of that one is a sort of like minimize the power losses and the copper losses load and all these things switching losses everything will be coming uh, that power optimization loop and second from uh, thermal point of view it's like component and heat sink uh, optimization so uh, uh, if you uh, uh, like uh, have keep have a balance between these two uh, you can say objective uh, you are uh, all sort of like um, uh, performance will be in, uh, like acceptance limit so this is a background of that one so uh, yeah, I mean again, this is a, a sort of like uh, that boundary condition about uh, what are the boundary condition and uh, uh, what are the parts in that one uh, we have considered for analysis thermal analysis. So it is mentioned here. So ambient was twenty five and the uh, fan flow uh, twenty cfm at the rate uh, around uh, two thousand rpm, and uh, we also consider this uh, this as a ten layer uh, this PCB uh, with. Uh, 7 micron as a, a sort of like thickness of that copper layer and again these are the components and uh, like upper housing lower housing with epoxy porting thermal pad MOSFET, diodes and uh, inductor and pan cards so all these are the components in that uh, assembly and uh, these are the sort of uh, uh, virtual simulation results like temperatures and uh, on heat sink from top side bottom side and uh, on the PCB level and uh, the components. So it is, uh, if we see the numbers uh, uh, here, uh, there's a lot of scope for optimization. And uh, so uh, as this is a base analysis, we can go for optimization with the help of this uh, uh, DOE, alter hyperbole DOE and uh, 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 design study. So uh, where we can have like uh, multi-objective uh, optimization through hyper study and uh, we can achieve the uh, optimization. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this is a sort of like, again, these CFD plots are there and uh, the section view of the CFD fans. So, uh, okay. So, okay. So this is a sort of, uh, you can say the thermal simulation I have shown to you and uh, so what other possibility we can perform uh, uh, on this one uh, we have done that one but uh, why i'm mentioned here as a future work because uh, if you connect all the physics uh, like uh, um, uh, this structural physics then EMR, uh, this electromagnetic physics uh, thermal physics uh, then uh, thermomechanical and integrated uh, sort of physics if you connect with the digital twin then definitely uh, it is a sort of like total uh, model and uh, 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 where from where we can uh, we can estimate the total system level performance through this uh, ka, ka, by using this digital twin so uh, uh, so this is a glimpse of you can say uh, a thermal case study on obc and if you have any questions on this obc and obc uh, uh, like a sort of like a dc dc converter or in battery, battery management system you can ping me and you can call me uh, on even phone also not an issue i can uh, we can have a discussion on that one uh, and uh, uh, um, i mean yeah i mean so this is the things we have done at our end and uh, we have done the sops uh, based on the you can say thermal and uh, physical uh, uh, simulation and physical test comparison and uh, we have made the sops based on these uh, comparisons so I hope, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I complete this kind of, I, I complete this occasionally uh, in a short way, but uh, uh, thank you for, uh, uh, I mean, thank you for uh, listening to me and 
Uh, thank you, for, uh, thank you for, for, I mean, it's a part of pleasure to be part of this discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much for that insightful presentation. Uh, so if you could just uh, click on the stop sh uh, sharing screen option. Yeah. Again, thank you so much for that insightful presentation and uh, setting the tone for the webinar. Now it's time to begin our much awaited panel discussion. And to discuss this in the panel we have with us, Mr. Kaspul Patel from ARAI, Mr. Vishal Ahuja from Vitov Motors, Mr. Shantaram Jadav, Mr. Mulidhar Guma from Altair, Mr. Rajiv Vaisar, uh, Mr. Uh, Subarao from ARAI. I welcome all our panelists on the screen and request Mr. Rajiv to lead the discussion. Before that, I would like to make a small announcement here, requesting all the attendees to post their questions in the Q&A chat box on your right. Our panelists will take those at the end of the session. Uh, please welcome to screen, everyone. Over to you, Mr. Rajiv. Thank you very much, Sakshi, uh, for the brief introduction. I think it's a great evening to be here, guys. Uh, anything about electric vehicles that kind of excites me. And what's a better topic than this, where we are talking about transformation of electric vehicle product designs and running through the developments of those through the right engineering simulation. I think we had good presentations by Shantaram and uh, Murali there on how the simulation plays a very significant role in terms of bringing the go-to-market time in cutting down the potential hazards of the business and of the, of course, of the, of the product. And more importantly, understand possible ways a product would fail and then make the design even more robust. So with this, I feel very honored to be here. Myself, Raji Vaisar, I advise the government of Andhra Pradesh on investments and promotions and policy in EV and other related sectors. I've also been recognized as 40 under 40 young EV leaders in India. Prior to this, I was the chief business development officer for Eto Motors and also the chief operating officer and strategy officer for Gati Logistics, <coughs> where the first last mile operations of electric vehicles in 2018 was started by me. So with this, uh, I welcome all the participants to this wonderful, I would say 40 minutes of uh, panel discussion that we will have. And <clears throat> those who are watching us online, please feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A box. We will <clears throat> accordingly divert those questions to the renewable, I would say, panel members. Now, with this in mind, let me quickly turn to Mr. Vishal Ahuja from V2 Waters. The name seems to be interesting. And I also understand from his uh, introduction that he was an ex-Mahindrite. In fact, Vishal, I was also an ex-Mahindrite. I was heading the no. product operations and business for carworks.com. Yeah, nice. uh, uh, I would say a uh, startup within Mahindra and Mahindra almost three okay. years ago. So Vishal, uh, I want, we want you to understand and hear from you your story. I mean, having worked in R&D at Mahindra Research Valley in Chennai and then joining a startup, right? Uh, with, 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 with definitely an ambition and uh, with a vision to add immense value. I want to know your quick comments on the given topic today. Please go ahead, Vishal. Uh, see, good thing about Mahindra and Mahindra R&D Center was everything was an in-house, right? Mahindra being an Indian company, so from project target setting to the end of the product development, we see everything in Mahindra R&D Center. And Mahindra is, is actually full of capable people in, inside it. And the simulation is given the top priority. And fortunately, I was fortunate enough when I joined Mahindra, I started vehicle energy management department in Mahindra. Nothing was known that time and EV was just new in the market. So how to set the target of the electric vehicles, right? Different components are there, tire, brakes, CD coefficient of drag, everyone talks about electrical components and all. Uh, so this is how the journey started in Mahindra. Uh, all the projects was handled by me for electric vehicle homologation, testing, development, simulation. So I learned 
a lot of company drive cycle of that right and uh, mahindra electric being our partner we set a targets like this should be the component sizing this should be the value of each and every component now being joining a startup reason was to develop something again from again in india for india right mahindra was doing good there's no doubt about it but developing your own product right by yourself that is something when you get that chance that is an outstanding chance for anyone and uh, generally startup face an issue of funding i got an option for a investment company itself who wanted to start a startup and join me as a co-founder so uh, this is one of its uh, option opportunity which i got uh, by the investment banking itself to start a startup and uh, fortunately they started uh, they invested already in the infrastructure they invested in the a uh, charger company then invest in the motor company now they wanted to start their own company for the electric vehicle this is how i joined uh, vito motors it started 6 uh, months back only now we are developing three wheeler and four wheeler cargo electric vehicle start with yeah perfect so uh, now let me understand uh, vishal what do you think uh, would be the significance of or the importance of data analytics right especially the ev as a segment itself is growing now right you'd really yes, got yes, enough right. used cases to kind of build models and then uh, retrieve data analyze data i mean it is very very uh, nascent and right. even at this point of time <clears throat> the conceptualization that we build the ml algorithms into this engineering right seems to be right. i would say too ambitious at this point of time right definitely realistic but too ambitious we want to understand your views on how <coughs> important it is to Uh, rely upon the data analytics to in terms of the system engineering design correct now i'll tell you see the government also understand that importance of it if you see the telematics unit has become compulsory now right to comply for the fame subsidy you should have the telematics unit why the telematics unit so that you understand how the vehicle is being driven now if you see all the electric vehicle they have a telematics unit you get all the data which is coming from the battery which is coming from the vehicle how the vehicle is being driven how it is being how the customer is driving it what are the load cases what temperature conditions everything is being captured right now and that is the input for your own new next generation models for suppose tata nexon was the now most selling ev in the in passenger segment when they decided to migrate to next product they used that data to present a use case that why my 40 uh, uh, kilowatt hour battery was justified right so that data was useful to again justify what is my next move that is one of the use case of data now if you see the government regulation for ai 136 again they are saying that 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 the battery should be the bms should be smart right it should be able to communicate with the consumer and the vehicle that okay i am having some fault so these are the importance of data analytics again if you see the dt estimation that distance to empty range estimation everything is based on ml algorithm now range anxiety is a big issue everyone knows that right but can you inform the user given this charge your vehicle will drive only this much in this much this mode you have eco sport boost mode sports mode right when the user select that he should know whether how much he can drive with that mode so these are the application of that in the this area other than that in the product engineering also as uh, mr murthan also was talking mr santra was talking you can use the ml algorithm in the design development itself see there is something called generative engineering that everyone is working on so they use again the topology optimization ai algorithm to actually design the system such a way that the system is much more efficient like for example mr shantaram talked about the onboard charger right if you use ml ml algorithm you can actually place a component in such a way that system is much more efficient based on the previous data so there is a hybrid approach right with a physics based model ml based model then you can combine those approach and get the better outcome of the model which you are making brilliant brilliant that's interesting now let me quickly move to uh, a very interesting uh, i would say uh, delegate or a panelist that we have who is basically responsible for certification and even they can reject or approve of the products that run on the roads right so let me move to uh, mr kasthu padel gm eds arai so mr kasthu uh, this is my question to you i mean in the last one year as on one hand we see <coughs> the increase in the penetration of electric vehicles let it be two wheelers or three wheelers on the other hand we also see especially during the summer of 2022 we saw enough evidences and cases where not paying right attention to the safety aspects of things 
might result in catastrophic effects right be it in be it the fire accidents in nagpur or be it the fire accidents in hyderabad or be it the nexon being burnt in mumbai i mean irrespective of the brand and the product and geography one of the hottest summers kind of validated most of our products right so it is in this context mr kasto these are two questions that i have for you number one how do you advise or what kind of a message you would provide in mitigating these kind of challenges and safety parameters in battery pack design and their role uh, and then the role of simulations in ensuring that such kind of safety aspects are rightly addressed to you mr kasto yeah good afternoon all a uh, very nice question and very in- important aspect that is the safety and in ev where people uh, are really uh, found challenging the safety aspect that is the battery thermal run away and uh, battery <coughs> thermal management so people are still working on battery thermal management and uh, uh, battery run away because this safety aspect what you specifically mentioned that Uh, the fire issues which uh, we are hearing from uh, all around so uh, this is because of the uh, uh, safe because of this battery uh, uh, currents are not properly engaging to each other and uh, the batteries are found to be uh, thermal run away and because of overheating of batteries this fire issues are being uh, uh, reported uh, uh, frequently so uh, definitely this our um, uh, simulation plays very important role uh, for battery thermal management prediction uh, as well as uh, battery thermal uh, run away and also uh, nail penetration that is one of the very important test uh, which we generally carried out and it is very mandatory test so uh, that also plays very important role uh, while defining the battery safety or overall electric vehicle safety so uh, definitely uh, this simulation uh, uh, driven design of battery pack uh, is very important now and uh, people are really working on this uh, even uh, we are uh, working uh, day in day out on this battery thermal management uh, how uh, the cooling uh, can be improved effectively uh, in the vehicle uh, that depends on your battery pack design structural design and there are obviously some mandatory standards are there like 156 that uh, battery uh, pack shock and vibration performance assessment and nail penetration and all those things are covered there so uh, battery uh, pack drop is also there so all this assessment if we do uh, uh, properly during the design stage itself Uh, we can definitely mitigate all these issues which uh, uh, may come uh, uh, after prototype testing and uh, at at the which are facing now uh, to the end users also like battery uh, uh, like this uh, fire issues of the evs so definitely some standards are still uh, 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 they are coming uh, uh, in upcoming uh, uh, scenarios uh, so uh, Uh, we and uh, our uh, uh, vendors uh, like our battery pack vendors uh, all those are combinedly looking into those standards and uh, trying to uh, figure out uh, some good uh, 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 good statements out of it uh, so that we will definitely mitigate all those uh, uh, battery thermal management issues and fire issues brilliant brilliant so now let me take this question to uh, morli sir right he was impressing upon Uh, the three kind of uh, runaways that could be caused due to mechanical electrical and thermal runaways themselves and he kind of gave uh, a sneak peek of how altair to certain extent kind of predicts the possible uh, uh, failure cases and then also suggests the design inputs so murli then let me top it up on this particular question we want to understand from you uh, right what what uh, are the specific i would say functionalities that uh, altair has and which the designers and then the simulation engineers need to focus upon especially to avoid in this particular context and second thing is uh, this is again another important question is with fame subsidy almost getting depleted i would say right i mean there are good number of uh, vehicles that are already on road and then there is a lot of rush even for the manufacturers to bring as many vehicles as possible and to make their models successful on the road right so in a context like this how will altair as a software help them 
in reducing their go to market so two questions to you please take time and answer thank you thank you mr rajiv uh, that's an interesting question uh, you asked and i think uh, uh, mr deshpande has also mentioned that uh, there are a lot of regulations are been evolving uh, on the battery safety uh, especially in country like india where extreme hot weather and extreme cold weather we have seeing it you know uh, battery design and development plays a major role uh especially to avoid the you know heating um, you know uh, a con- you know uh, especially the states like uh, you know uh meghalaya or probably you know j and k you know in that in that regions where the extreme cold conditions are uttarakhand or you know range where um you are talking about a thermal encapsulation there are a lot of you know thermal management heating up a battery and all need to done but if you have to heat up a battery definitely you are trying to reduce the range you know you need to understand how you are trying to you know uh, uh, address those range uh, you know anxiety issues which vishal is also mentioning so definitely the virtual simulation will help us on working on this thermal encapsulation doing a thermal management upfront in the design stage so that the range uh, issues can be you know uh, addressed uh, through simulation based approach or probably uh, vishal was also mentioning how you can infer from a digital twin kind of a you know uh now uh, 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 an approach could be where uh, the vehicle says, let's say an example like your 100 vehicles running on a road and then you are trying to understand the drive cycle pattern country like india every user is different and uh, every uh, you know uh, 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 road condition is different then how do you take this data up and understand in infer the data back into your you know virtual simulation and see what kind of a design consideration you did right or wrong can will it my uh, predict uh, predictive maintenance can i do can i give a life uh, you know battery life for my 70 years or 5 years this is much more important because overall cost of the vehicle is depend on the battery cost you know 40% of the vehicle cost is on the battery so you are trying to take a valuable inputs from the information that is going to generate by this you know virtual simulation tool and today's context the high performance computing uh, is much more demanded lot of co simulation you can do it be it a battery bms with the battery uh, you know structural you can do a lot of 3d and 1d simulation to understand uh, whether uh, your battery uh, state of charge at any given point of time whether you have a proper uh, you know um, um, hall effect sensors which will try to give you a short circuit side of a phenomena uh, to understand and manage the cell balancing all the simulation tools are all there having you know uh, to address these both thermal and structural and and as well as you know data analytics platform brilliant thank you thank you very much uh, murli now uh, my next question to shantaram from uh, you know minda right when i started my career with tvs motor company i started it as a senior design engineer and i used to have a counterpart who is a, a cie analyst right who would validate my designs who would kind of check whether my designs are good or bad and there is always a, a i would say a conflict right because when as a designer when you design of course you take the uh, the kinematics and dynamics into consideration but you also have a lot of ergonomics things also into consideration especially tvs vehicles being known for uh, not so jazzy except for apache there was a tremendous pressure on us to build vehicles such as yamaha fz uh, right honda cv twister i am talking about 2010 almost 12 years ago and while we try to do that the 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 <coughs> regular analyst engineers they kind of bring back the whole frame to the conventional standard uh, right things because of course those are time tested and well proven right so now it is in this context i want to understand more from the complete vehicle architecture perspective shantara so <clears throat> please please uh, uh, throw some light on how i mean have the simulation tools really evolved to handle the entire i would say dynamics as well as uh, uh, the entire uh, mass distribution and everything because ev is no longer just a mechanical product with a huge battery coming in and a lot of controllers that are interacting with this it is a real great mechatronics product right and it is not just sufficient for us to just analyze the mechanical aspects of it but you need to bring multiple things into this picture right so now that the system and the vehicle has become really complicated i want to understand from you how simulation will really help uh, reduce the complexity uh, on this kind of things and yet give us the results that are desired uh, right by the engineers over to you shantara you are muted probably you la- you might have to unmute yeah uh thank you uh, thank you ajay uh, so you put a very good point here uh, in terms of uh, like the importance of uh, simulations in uh, new product development uh, especially these ev uh, sort of vehicles where 
the complexity of the uh, i can say uh, the work and physics is very uh, at different level so obviously uh, uh, when uh, mr guma uh, he was uh, explaining about the product of arte and uh, even uh, as we have different products like ads and uh, uh, nscs and all other products so uh, uh, while working on that product uh, the specific to system level i mean if there is a sort of system level sort of like architecture is there then definitely uh, uh, we have uh, i mean it is start with control loop system and then like a, uh, like a, and then emimc performance and then uh, thermal thermal mechanical and fatigue so all the physics are interconnected i mean so the actually if you have to predict the actual you can say performance so you have to connect all the physics uh, dot by dot i mean it is not like independently we can do the standard analysis like structural and uh, uh, we can say that this part uh, this part is okay so it is not like the case because um, as the uh, the complexity goes up so we have to integrate the different kind of physics and different kind of equance systems uh, together and we have to uh, check the performance of each system all together so that's the only way we can get the sort of like accuracy uh, uh, we will get the accuracy uh, uh, with a great margin and uh, you can check the performance uh, at each level so that is how uh, we have to go with the digital twin the kind of simulations where uh, we can capture these kind of requirements so um, as i mentioned these uh, different kind of uh, like uh, software tools are uh, evolved in between like co simulations are also we have to perform uh, we have a matlab uh, where we can get a control loop system and we can connect that uh, control loop system to our um, uh, simulations also these multiphysic simulations and we can perform the uh whole system level simulations so this is how we have to go uh, and uh, as i mentioned that uh, this is a need of we can say uh, nowadays uh, this uh, virtual simulation and uh, 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 this is how we can get the our product uh, uh, and we can model the product and we can um, get the results and we can predict the better results yeah right. brilliant brilliant so vishal now let me uh, move to you especially now that you are building something for the first time right i think i'm sure this is something which you would be dealing by yourself right so there is uh, uh, no valid uh, i would say answer than listening it from the horses most directly right tell me one thing as a first time uh, i would say founder as a cto you will definitely have an immense urge to just design your vehicle and bring it to the market right uh, <clears throat> and you can always consider let me develop the whole design as i go correct now in this context please help me understand how design testing simulation how can you really handle them hand in glove to ensure that you handle the entire life cycle of the product development in from very conception stage to your proto stage ensuring that you neither fail in your testing nor you fail in your simulations and at the same time your designs are appealing please correct so actually uh, simulation is not never a stand alone it always go hand in hand with testing right so one very important slide which mr mosley also covered from target concept target setting empirical equations then to basic level of simulation then the advanced level of simulation right this is a life cycle of the product development again let's talk about when sizing the motor right when selecting the motor for for suppose we decide the load distribution okay this is my vehicle gvw for my this battery pack capacity what is my uh, range which i am getting it then what's my power train sizing empirical equation then we go to the matlab simulating models or maybe the ams gt suit model okay then how is my power train is performing in that condition do i have to change anything whether i am getting the right range okay which components I have to tune everything has to be done in simulation environment you cannot test it at this stage you don't have the product right this is very important to do all everything so that you are not getting it wrong you are getting it right then comes the first proto after doing your first proto you understand okay now this is my product let's test each and every component see what mistake people do is predicting the range or predicting anything what's about structural simulation it's very easy but there is process variation manufacturing variability right welding defects are there process variations are there even component variation also there you have to catch in everything in the testing phase one product comes to you you have to test it and then correlate the model 
once that model is coded on the component level then you can be sure of the vehicle level simulations because component level simulations are very very important to have a good correlation then only you can go for integration of all vehicle level so that goes hand in hand like for suppose after predicting something do i have the motor test efficiencies map with me right i can i can say because initial con, uh, initial time the even component level also for suppose if i go for a new motor development they don't have the uh, tested efficiency map they will give me the uh, simulated efficiency map after testing the motor whether this matching or if that is not matching i have to revise my simulation so what is the impact of the range right similarly for structures for suppose we selected some material at the end of production is there is the same thing is happening on the component is getting the same which i ordered in my simulations also the welding which i defined in my simulation as is, is it same the spring dampness which i defined is it same so everything has to be cross verified and if something is changing on the actual te testing you have to revise the simulation to actually again tune it so this is a iterative process it go hand in hand some can someone cannot say okay my simulations are completed now i cannot do the testing testing is also important right component level then the vehicle level the range testing is also important meeting the range you can match by for suppose there are multiple component tire is one parameter brake is one parameter gearbox is one parameter your range may match but are the component level values also matching that is also very important people say my range is matching or my performance is matching but is your component also matching for suppose tires here are coefficient of drag right i i saw like for suppose mr shantaram did the solution for 25 degree centigrade for the obc simulation but in my summers my ambient will be 45 degree centigrade i have to again check my correlation back as is my 45 degree correlation matching well with my vehicle level evaluations right so this goes hand in hand so you cannot that is how you simulate and test then simulate and that because passing criteria is coming from simulation no for suppose i decided my range it should come this much for suppose 120 km or 150 km then after testing it am i getting my range what i expected or my performance so that becomes hand in hand if i'm not getting again i have to go back and check what is wrong right so again from the beginning of the project to the end of the project everything goes hand in hand at and at the end also when you do the statistical analysis right because there are process variations again you have to find the mean of that what you are getting as a mean not the outliers because initial protos can be very beautiful in the production stage when you go for the assembly lines and everything there will be variations so again your simulation should be correlating with the statistical average of that production volumes not with the few protos of initial or homologation vehicles you find that homologation vehicle have very good range production may something else comes right but the simulation should correlate with the end process what the customer is getting at the end the statistical average of that that is very important fantastic thank you vishal uh, and uh, thank you also rest of the participants i think we are almost um, close uh, towards the <laughs> today's wonderful session we'll wait for q and a but this is one question which is which i am basically asking to all the panelists and all the participants right now <laughs> one of the biggest threats to the ev industry right now i'm sure you're all aware is the non availability of relevant talent pool many of the young engineers who pass out now they very conveniently pick up c c++ java sql if not a software engineer or a coder at least they will start as a testing engineer rank up their careers learn some website development app development or tragedy irony they might even get into the performance marketing or digital marketing right so when <clears throat> on one hand the electric vehicles industry needs 50 million i would say hands on the deck for it to really propel forward we see irony on the other hand where the young generation is not really keen about core in fact i'm sure you would have heard of incidents where colleges are shutting shutting down the core engineering right when i say core engineering your mechanical electrical etc and then they are only focused upon it and software now now in this particular context i really want to understand from the industry professionals like yours right what are you either as an individual or as your organization what are especially for <coughs> players like altair it is even more relevant right how is it that you are bringing the design concepts and design principles and access to the aspiring budding students engineers entrepreneurs and also for companies like minda etc right who have been really there for a while and then 
you have nurtured your own uh, talent internally right so how are you all trying to fix this problem of encouraging and exciting these youngsters to consider a profile and a profession in the ever growing industry called evs so that we would soon realize we missed the industrial revolution we kind of picked up with the it revolution but we cannot afford to miss the ev revolution right and we have all the more reasons and all the bigger roles to play right i want to hear from all of you i do not want to name anybody whosoever wants to pick up and then talk about how you intend to pitch this gap and then help the industry get the get the talent pool that is required please feel free to go ahead and then pitch him thank you yeah so uh, thanks rajiv i think uh, you made my day to ask some question you know very very interesting and uh, which is close to our heart as an alter you know uh, we been uh, very active in um, nurturing the students and startups alter uh, as conducting a startup challenge you know every year the last year supposed to be in uh, electric vehicles and this year we are on uh, drones and uavs we are conducting a startup challenge and where we are trying to pull the uh student community incubation centers you know like iit madras iit delhi sign uh, iit mumbai you know and various industry professionals we are trying to pull uh, together and uh, not so the start and then you know uh, uh, and uh, what you said the skill development where the young generation is trying to you know uh, do it on more on the uh, computer science and you know more uh, more uh, you know fancy and you know doing about their own um, you know uh, moving around, you know uh, Uh, away from the india or uh, probably they have their own uh, you know passion to work on so uh, the change has to happen from the college the institutions itself so what we understand while working with the long term with the institutions the way the institutions are working as as, as actually started changing you know we been uh, seeing the they have trying to change their own syllabus you know uh, which catch up to the industry markets you know kind of electric vehicle or probably a digital twin or uh, or some industries are even talking about industry 4 by calling the you know industry professionals they are trying to make sure the engineers in today's market understand these Uh, technologies before they graduate out and do it and they're also encouraging the entrepreneurship a huh? lot of incubation centers you know iit delhi and iit madras and and many other incubation centers which are coming in actually trying to give an insight or a probably encouraging the new tool to put up their own startup companies and where the healthy competition is coming and many uh, uh, you know um, uh, uh, institutions are developing their own research and development lab where they uh, where the young talent is you know more passionate about the what they learn they're trying to implement in uh, and there are many student competitions like you know baha shell epamartan where alter is actually you know associated with the uh, with the students are coming with a different technology we are talking about a 36 months to 48 months of product timelines if you see the products which are coming from e baha where i've been uh, there in last year uh, um, may and the indoor with a hot summer Uh, uh vehicles are running for 3 3 and 1/2 continuous hours uh, uh, in the climate like indoor uh, without any breakdown which surprises me the students i will to do that you know have a passion uh, it's all industry and the institutions and the incubation center should really uh, you know encourage them and guide them and nurture them in a right way i i, I see um, the uh, the edu platform is going to be coming in a big way um uh, to uh, to um, uh, to take this and uh, you know we all uh, should work uh, to fill this gap brilliant 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 thank you anybody else would like to pitch in i think uh, uh, murli we need to connect uh, after this there are a lot of uh, quite common interests we both carry uh, let's sure. let's do that yeah others please uh one uh, opinion from my side uh, it's a very good question that we are also facing the same issues like what rajiv was mentioning that uh, the attrition rate in our current uh, uh, scenario so uh, that's a big issue and as well as the uh, suitable talent for uh, that product uh, you can say the working product so a uh, lot of things actually a lot of uh, like uh, way of uh, things we can do one is like a, uh, like a, a partners like arter have uh, the academics like different colleges Uh, they can have this center of excellence so under center of excellence there is a sort of like agreement between uh, these companies like arter and cis and others one uh, these universities uh, so they can uh, you can say uh, develop the, the people uh, in terms of this ev in terms of these um, trainings in terms of uh, this competency development so uh, with this uh, i think if you given this kind of like uh, if you start uh, this kind of like initiation at uh, at early stages of this uh, you can say 
uh, for student uh, this university level then definitely uh, it will help in bridging this gap of attrition uh, in uh, you can say short way but uh, definitely it will help in terms of uh, they i mean not by 100% but definitely it will help by you can say at least at basic level so this is how uh, i feel that uh, uh, there is a sort of like uh, uh, the center of excellence uh, agreement uh, you should have with uh, these universities yeah great great anybody else would like to pick up vishal or yes mr rajiv yeah, uh, yeah, super yeah. Yeah. yes uh, very good question and uh, attrition is the biggest issue now uh, finding the right persons for the right job is becoming very difficult now and uh, this can be addressed with by conducting some uh, what to say collaborative courses with the industry for the educational institutes and uh, <coughs> at era we do have some collaborative courses with colleges and uh, trying to retain the manpower in the same industry most of the guys are getting uh, and moving to software industry for the better uh -huh. prospects by knowing the importance of the mechanical industry or uh, by creating some interest with the in the youth to be in uh, what is it that uh, upcoming technology like electrical vehicles and uh, adas and so on we can uh, retain the manpower and uh, we can bring up uh, young generation with uh, good technology road map this is from my side wonderful wonderful anybody else would like to add one thing i would like to add that uh, as uh, mr subar also mentioned that there is a shortage because people are migrating towards uh, other software segment right it segment but one thing that people don't go in deep what problem if you see sometime india face that uh, people work on surface level and they switch the job because getting this one they don't go deep enough right uh, excellence of india can only happen and with right candidate when people go deep enough in the problems right then only they can actually understand the in depth understanding then only we can compete in terms of r and d with other nations like uh, let let's take china it was far behind us but it, it has taken over a lot right many many papers are coming from chinese journals and all if you see there uh, so it is very important for the students in the college time itself to given the problems which are practical in nature right that is very important so maybe if the industry problems are given so that they don't work on the something uh, small project which are not relevant for the industry or not relevant for the uh, india as such right so that way it can be improved in depth knowledge or in depth understanding or hands on which is very important that's when that will happen definitely will get a good talent pool for hiring i am also facing the issues of hiring obviously so when this happen definitely this will improve brilliant brilliant so i think uh, that brings us towards the end of this wonderful panel discussion that we had where probably right from the simulation and design perspective we also looked at uh, uh, the talent the the attrition and then the equipping of this particular talent i think brilliant insights uh, shared by uh, wonderful panelists and uh, great to be here all of you i think thank you very much e mobility for organizing the such power pack discussion look forward for more such kind of thought provoking conversations and until then this is raju wise sir signing off for today thank you very much thank you so much we would like to extend our gratitude to all our esteemed panelists here today for the exhilarating session and a very special thanks to you mr rajiv for superbly moderating the session thank you everyone thank you attendees for investing your valuable time and support for the event i hope the key takeaways from the session will be instrumental in paving the way for sustainability we promise to be back with more exciting sessions it's time to say goodbye have a wonderful weekend everyone thank you thank you thank you thank you, all. Thank you. Thank you all.